Good day everyone. In this video lesson, we will discuss about general annuity. So ano ba yung pagkakaiba ng general annuity sa simple annuity nat? Sa simple annuity. So hindi kagaya ng simple annuity. So sa simple annuity, same yung payment interval sa kayong compounding period. Dito, uh, magkaiba. So yung focus natin sa video lesson na to is to find the future value of general annuity. So hinati-hati natin sa tatlong parts no yung lesson about general annuity. First is to find the future value at yung pangalawang video lesson natin is to find the present value of general annuity at yung pangatlo naman is to find the periodic payment or tinatawag din natin regular payment. So let us first define the following terms. General annuity is an annuity where the payment interval is not the same as the interest period. So, kagaya nga ng sinabi ko kanina, magkaiba no, yung payment interval doon sa uh, compounding period niya or doon sa rate interest ng compounding period. And the general ordinary annuity, so pag sinabi natin general ordinary annuity, a general annuity in which the periodic payment is made at the end of the payment interval. So ano ba yung mga halimbawa ng general annuity? No? So, first, we have monthly installment payment a car, lot, or house with an interest rate that is compounded annually. So kapag, uh, base dyan sa problem na yan, so, ano yung payment interval natin? So, ibig sabihin, yung mode of payment niya is monthly. So, that is the payment interval. So, ano naman yung compounding period? That is compounded annually. So, magkaiba sila. Hindi ka guys sa uh, simple annuity, same yung payment interval, same yung payment interval, saka yung compounding period. Another example, we have paying a debt semi-annually when the interest is compounded monthly. So, yung payment interval natin dyan is uh, semi-annually or twice a year and then yung compounding period niya is compounding monthly. So, magkaiba. So, ito yung mga halimbawa ng general annuity. So, what is the formula to find the future value of general annuity? So, R times the quantity of 1 plus I raised to N minus 1 over I. So, sa iba, ang ginagamit dito is letter J. No? Since uh, start dun sa uh, simple interest and compound interest, ang ginagamit na natin dito is I para hindi kayo malito kapag uh, nanonood kayo dito sa video lesson namin. So, I na yung ginamit natin. So, hanggang dito sa general annuity. And then dito class since kailangan natin kunin no dito kasi sa uh, general annuity bago natin makuha yung future value kailangan natin kunin yung equivalent interest rate per payment interval converted from the interest rate per peer uh, per period so kailangan natin yon so ito yung gagamitin nating formula okay and then, yung N natin is the total number of payments that is M sub 1 times T. So, mamaya makikita nyo kung ano ibig sabihin ng M sub 1 saka yung M sub 2 para hindi kayo malito at guided kayo sa pag-solve nung uh, pagkuha ng future value ng general annuity. So, pag sinabi nating R, no, denoted as R, that is the regular payment or yung tinatawag rin nating periodic payment. I is the equivalent interest rate per payment interval converted from the interest rate per period. Okay, and after that, N, that is the total number of payment. R, that is the nominal rate. M sub 1, that is the payment interval. Yung M sub 2 naman, that is the compounding period. And then T is the term of annuity. Okay. So, for example, number one, Chris started to depos deposit 1,000 pesos monthly in a fund that pays 6% compounded quarterly. So, nag-start na daw si Chris mag-deposit ng 1,000 pesos every month no, with 6% compounded quarterly. 
So, how much will be in the fund after 15 years? So, para makuha natin at di tayo malito sa pagkuha ng future value, kailangan malinaw sa atin ang pagkuha ng mga givens. So, first, so si 1,000, that is the regular payment. No? So, yun ang binabayad niya every month. So, regular payment is 1,000 pesos. And then, yung M sub 1 natin is the payment interval or yung mode of payment niya. Tuwing kailan ba siya nagbibigay ng nagde-deposit ng 1,000? That is monthly. So, therefore, M sub 1 is equal to 12. And then, yung M sub 2 naman natin, so that is the compounding period. So, that madaling kunin yung M sub 2 natin kasi lagi siyang karugtong ng word na compounded. So, makukuha nyo agad yung M sub 2 natin dahil lagi siyang karug uh, kasunod ng word na compounded. And that is quarterly. Since quarterly, so M sub 2 is equal to 4. And then, yung time natin or yung terms, that is 15 years. And then, the nominal rate. So, madali rin ma-identify yung nominal rate. So, nag-iisa lang din ang makikita nyo dyan interest in nominal rate. And that is 6%. So, i-convert na natin into decimal. That is equal to 0 0.06. And then, yung value ng N. So, using M sub 1 times T. So, yung M sub 1 natin is 12. Times 15. Kasi yun yung T natin. 12 times 15. The answer is 180. So, yung value ng N natin is 180. After that, Okay, so bago natin makuha yung future value, kailangan muna natin kunin uh, yung equivalent rate. So, kailangan natin i-convert yung 6% compounded quarterly to its equivalent interest rate for monthly payment interval. So, yung pinakita ko kaninang formula, so ito yon, I is equal to 1 plus the nominal rate over M sub 2 raised to uh, M sub 2 over M sub 1 minus 1. Okay. Uh, so, ito ay ako lang yung nagani nito. Nag, uh, gumawa. Or, uh, inayos ko para mas mapadali yung pag-compute nyo ng equivalent rate. Kasi, yung iba masyadong mahaba bago makuha natin yung equivalent rate. So, ito na yung gamitin yung formula para mapabilis kayo kunin yung equivalent rate. Okay, so kailangan lang ma-identify nyo yung M sub 2 saka M sub 1 nyo, saka yung nominal rate. So, ano lang gagawin natin? Okay, uh, isa-substitute lang natin lahat ng given values no sa formula na to. So, yung nominal rate natin ito, 0 0.06 over 4, kasi yung M sub 2 natin is 4, raised to uh, 4 over 12. So, yung M sub 2 is 4. And M sub 1 is 12 minus 1. You can use your scientific calculator. The answer is 0 0.00497521. Yung suggested na number of decimal places is 6, at least 6. So, sa akin, nag-start tayo uh, hanggang 8. So, all throughout the video lesson about general annuities, yung gagamitin natin is 8 decimal places para safe na tayo dun sa uh, pinaka exact na uh, value ng future va uh, sagot yung exact answer no, sa future value okay using your calculator okay gamit tayo ng calculator okay using the calculator so pwede natin ipakita kung paano yung input yan sa calculator so ilagay muna natin yung open and close parenthesis natin open and close and then, balik tayo sa gitna. Ilagay natin yung 1 plus, tapos yung fraction bar natin. That is 0 0.06 over 4. And then, yung exponent natin. No? Okay. That is, and then, pindutin yung another fraction bar. Okay. 4 over 12. And then, click nyo to. Tapos ang click pa, minus 1. So, then click equal. So, the answer is, so kapag ganito, no, nakaraise to, yung scientific notation natin, nakaraise sa negative 3. 
So, mula dito sa number na to, ibig sabihin magdadagdag ka ng dalawang zero kasi negative 3. So, ibig sabihin tatlo dapat. Since, uh, mula dito sa 4, magdadagdag ka ng dalawang zero. Okay? So, kaya naging 0.00497521. Okay. So, after that, makukuha na natin yung future value natin using the formula na present ko kanina and that is R times 1 plus I raised to N minus 1 over I. So, substitute lang natin lahat ng given values. So, yung regular payment natin, that is 1,000. And then, 1 plus yung value ng I natin, ito, raised to N. So, yung N natin is 180 minus 1 over the value of I. So, using your calculator, so, type muna natin yung 1,000. 1,000, so ayo 1,000, and then open and close parenthesis, then balik ulit kayo sa gitna, and then fraction bar, okay, maglagay ulit kayo dito ng open and close parenthesis sa taas natin, dito sa numerator natin, then balik sa gitna, 1 plus, or pwede nyo na idugtong yung 0.00 uh, 497521. So, kung ayaw nyo mag plus pass. 0 0.00497521. And then, yung exponent natin na 180. And then, baba, minus 1. And then, Type natin at sa baba yung value ng i, 0 0.00497521. Okay. And then, click equals. So, the answer is 290,082 pesos point 51. Okay. So, dun sa final answer natin, pwedeng uh, is, lagay na, kunin na lang natin yung two decimal places. Okay. So, ibig sabihin class, ibig sabihin yan, Chris will have 290,082 pesos and 51 centavos in a fund after 20 years. Okay, so ganyan lang computein yung pag, o ganito lang yung pagkuha ng future value. So, another example. A teacher saves 5,000 Every 6 months in a bank that pays 0.25% compounded monthly. So, how much will be her savings after 10 years? Okay. So, again, kailan malinaw sa atin ang pagkuha ng mga given. So, since uh, sabi dyan, yung teacher daw, nagsisave ng 5,000 pesos every 6 months. So, ibig sabihin ng 6 months, ah, uh, Dalawang beses sa isang taon. So, twice a year. And that is semi-annually. So, therefore, so yung 5,000 natin dyan, that is the regular payment. And then, yung M sub 1 natin, so ano ba yung mode of payment niya? Kung kailan ba siya nagbabayad? So, every 6 months. So, kung every 6 months, ibig sabihin, dalawang beses sa loob ng isang taon. So, that, therefore, yung M sub 1 natin is equal to 2. And then, yung compounding period natin dito is monthly. Kaya, yung M sub 2 natin is equal to 12. And then, yung T that is 10 years. So, T is equal to 10. And then, yung nominal rate natin is 0.25%. So, kapag kinonvert natin into decimal, so, magdadagdag pa tayo ng doon 0. That is 0 0.0025. And then, yung N natin, M sub 1 times T or 2 times 10 the value of n is 20. So, before we find the value of future value, again, kailangan muna natin kunin yung equivalent rate. So, kunin natin yung, i-convert muna natin yung 0.25% compounded monthly to its equivalent interest rate for its semi-annual payment interval. So, using the formula, kagaya na sa example number 1, Substitute lang natin yung nakuha natin no, na mga given dito sa formula na to. So, yung nominal rate, divide 12, since that is M sub 2, 
raised to m sub 2 over m sub 1. So that is 12 over 2 minus 1. So you can use scientific calculator. The answer is 0 0.00125065. So pwede yung guma kayong gumamit dyan ng calculator kasi mahirap i-compute to manually. Okay, so kagaya ng pinakita ko sa example number 1, kung paano ko in-input sa calculators, so ganun din yung gagawin. So therefore, to find the future value, it's using the same formula. So again, substitute lang natin yung mga given natin. That is 5,000 times 1 plus the value of i raised to 20 since that is our n minus 1 over the value of i. And using your scientific calculator, the answer is 101,197 pesos, 0 0.08 centavos. So, ibig sabihin, ibig sabihin class that uh, the teacher will be able to save ng magkano? 101,197 pesos, 0.08. Okay? After... 10 years. Okay, I'll give you another example. ABC Bank pays interest at the rate of 2% compounded quarterly. How much will have in the bank at the end of 5 years if he deposit 3,000 pesos every month? So, nandiyo yung word na deposit. So, ibig sabihin yung 3,000 natin, that is the regular payment. And Ang regular payment natin is 3,000. So, tuwing kailan siya nagbabayad? Every month. So, therefore, M sub 1 is equal to 12. At then, yung ano yung compounding period niya? That is quarterly. So, therefore, M sub 2 is equal to 4. And after that, T or that time, that is 5 years. And then, yung nominal rate natin is 2%. And that is 0 0.02. The value of n, m sub 1 times m sub, uh, m sub 1 times t, or 12 times 5, n is equal to 60. So again, bago natin makuha yung uh, future value, we need to convert 2% compounded quarterly to its equivalent interest rate for monthly payment interval. Same formula. So, substitute lang natin yung given values natin. Yung nominal rate, divide the uh, m sub 2 raised to m sub 2 over m sub 1 minus 1. And using your calculator, the answer is 0 0.00166390. Again, class, sabi ko kanina no, sa, umpisa, sa umpisa pa lang na kunin natin yung 8 decimal places. Pero, ang suggested, at least 6. No? At least 6. Safe na tayo dun sa sagot natin. So, to find the future value using the formula, so substitute lang natin yung regular payment that is 3,000 times 1 plus the value of i raised to 60, yun ito yung value ng n, minus 1 over the value of i. Therefore, the answer is 189,000 126 pesos point 40 centavos. So, ibig sabihin nito, no, after, anong sabi dito? Eh, bank, how much will have in the bank? So, magkano yung pera niya na sa banko? That is, 189,126 pesos point 40 centavos after 5 years. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button para updated kayo for more video tutorial. This is your guide in learning your math lesson, your WOW Math channel.